John 1 and Genesis 6. John 1 and Genesis 6. So I gave a teaching about Genesis 6 several videos. Now, I understand if people still have trouble believing, but then as for people who make fun of us, criticize dispensationalists for teaching about giants being offspring of sons of God, angels are sons of God, animals, uh, intermingling of strange animal, half animal, half human creatures come out from this intermingling of son of God, people who poke fun and criticize that, I'm going to be bashing those guys, all right? So if I bash them, it's not to people out there who don't know this who disagree. It's for people who bash the dispensationalists for doing this. So I'm doing this in return to bash them. So in this teaching, what I'm going to do is not just teach, uh, teach you this subject, because I taught it many times, right? So many, I told you clearly from the Bible. But what I'm going to do here is like an apologetic way. I'm going to do it in a defensive way. I'm going to do it in like a provable way. That this has to be the result, okay? The giants and intermingling. All right, so John chapter 1, verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. So silly anti-dispensationalists, because they don't know any Bible, the only Bible they know is John 1, 12, I guess. I guess they didn't look up every verse that says sons of God. They just look at John 1, 12. To become a son of God, to become the sons of God, is when you receive Christ for salvation. So these are referring to saints. That's why in Genesis 6, where it said the sons of God intermingled with the daughters of, excuse me, when the sons of God married with the daughters of men, it's not angels, to which dispensationalists argue it is. The sons of God, which we believe are angels, they say it's not. It's referring to saved saints who intermingled uh, with the lost people. Now, Bible-believing dispensationalists, I didn't say all, but Bible-believing dispensationalists believe this sons of God are clearly, undoubtedly angels. But then you got anti-dispensationalists who think that it's just Christians or saved people. John 1.12, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So that's their proof text, that... You become the son of God. You become one of his sons when you receive him for your salvation. Now, the answer is this, <clears throat> which they fail to read. They don't look at all the scriptures. You got to realize, if we are to say that these Old Testament saints, okay, these Old Testament saints at Genesis 6 are the sons of God, we got a problem. Go to the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. Chapter 1, verse 6. And then after that, go to John, 1 John, chapter 5, verse 18. 1 John, chapter 5, verse 18. Then why did the verse say, Jesus is the first begotten Son, and that saved Christians are later begotten sons? It could have said just the begotten, but why does it say first begotten? Because there are more begotten sons, and those are saved Christian. So you see that? If we are to argue these Old Testament saints are sons of God, or saved Christians, that contradicts this one. See that? First. No, Jesus is the first begotten son of God. He's the first. Christian saints, we are later <clears throat> begotten sons of God. So you got to realize this, John 1, 12, that's why it says in verse 13, at verse 13, which were born not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. See, we are begotten. So that's what John 1, 12 is referring to, is referring to begotten sons. See that? But here's another thing, is that if you argue that, no, there were sons of God before Jesus, see that? There were saved sons of God before Jesus. Then why does this say right here first? No, Jesus is the first. To be a saved son of God, it's begotten. And we're not the first. Jesus is the first. See? That proves it right there. Okay, so let's look at the book of Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 6. 
Notice what the Bible reads right here about Jesus Christ. He is the first begotten. First. He's the first. So, can't be Old Testament saints. They're not. They're not sons of God because they're not the first. Jesus is first. Hebrews chapter 1, and we will read verse 6. The Word of God reads right here. <clears throat> and again, when he bringeth in the what? First begotten into the world. He saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. Now, look at 1 John 5, 18. 1 John 5, 18. Why is he first begotten? Because we Christians, those who received him, are later begotten sons of God. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 18. The word of God reads right here. <clears throat> we know that whosoever is what? Born of God sinneth not. But he that is what? Begotten of God keepeth himself. That's what John 1, 12 to 13 is referring to. It's begotten sons. See that? Not only that, we're also going to look at 1 Corinthians 15, 20. 1 Corinthians 15, 20. Now I'm going to add another verse here because we don't have time. See, so I'm getting like clear-cut evidence. This is just enormous. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and notice what the Word of God reads right here at verse 20. Jesus is the first begotten. That's why we later come out, those who believe on him, later begotten sons of God. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the what? First fruits, see that, of them that slept. And that's why those who believe on Christ are the ones who later come out after him. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Notice right here that we become begotten of God because Jesus was the first begotten Son of God. 1 Corinthians 15, as well as Romans 8, support this idea of these two verses. Romans chapter 8 and verse 29, the Word of God reads right here, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. See that we're following Jesus, why? As a first that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. See that? Jesus is the firstborn among many brethren. There are other begotten <laughs> sons of God. If you argue that Old Testament saints are of Genesis 6, the sons of God in Genesis 6 are Old Testament saints of John 1.12, you contradict the Bible that Jesus is not the first. See? And you're going to have to argue that they're the first. Oh no, Jesus was the first begotten forever, they might say. Then, they, then those so-called KJV onlyists are NIV, those guys are NESV supporters of the book of John where it's talked about, they said Jesus is the begotten God. See that? So they're going to be supporting NIV. And these guys call themselves KJV? Why do they talk like NIV, NASV people then? See that? There's no doubt. What are you going to do with these verses? Their favorite chapter is Hebrews 1. Go back to Hebrews 1 to prove that Jesus Christ is called Son, Christians are called Son, but angels are not called Son. That's their argument. So we're going to look at Hebrews 1, 5. Notice right here that God cannot call angels His Son, nor they can be like a Son to Him. For unto which of the angels said He at any time, <clears throat> Thou art my Son, this day have I begotten thee. <clears throat> Excuse me. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. See that? So that's their proof text that angels cannot be called sons of God. <clears throat> but here's the easy answer. I thought they're KJV Bible believers. What are they, NASV, NIV uh, interpreters? Look, look at, the, look, look at the spelling here. Okay? There's your answer. They're not the capital Son of God. Amen. That's easy. By the way, they weren't reading. They're just so, these people get overtly excited and passionate out of anger and zeal because they have an agenda against dispensationalism. Yep. So then out of anger and zeal, they just quote Hebrews 1, 5. I got it. I found a verse. And if they read the verse carefully, they would have 
not ignore that capitalization. But not only that, what's the context? Is it Son of God or is it what we were discussing before? Begotten, right? This day have I begotten thee. It's talking about begotten Son of God. The pure, sheer ignorance. If that's not enough, they were too blind to see that in the same verse two times and the next verse too, the next verse. Look at the next verse. And again, when he bringeth in the what? First begotten into the world. See, that's the context here. It's talking about begotten son. It's not talking about, it's talking about begotten son. It's not talking about regular Sons of God. It's talking about begotten Son of God. Let's also look at Job chapter 38. Job chapter 38, verse 6. Job chapter 38, verse 6. Oh, no, you know, we, you can't call angels sons of God. There's no such thing. You just made that up. What do you do with this one? This is, by the way, this was the first Old Testament book. So even people knew this at the beginning of the Old Testament. Look at Job chapter 38, and we'll look at verse 6 through 7. Oh no, the sons of God at Job 1. I know what you're going to use, Job 1. Those are referring to Old Testament saints in heaven. That's why dispensationalism is nonsense that they went to Abraham's bosom. These guys have such an agenda. They're so blinded, they ignored Job 38. I don't think Job 1 was referring Old Testament saints in heaven. Because look what Job thought the sons of God were. Look at Job chapter 38, verse 6. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? This and comma, see that? It's continuing the same context. When God laid the foundation of the earth, verse 7, when the what? Morning stars sang together, and all the what? Sons of God shouted for joy. Oh, you think those are Old Testament saints? At the beginning, when God laid the foundation, there was only one man and one woman, okay? There was only one man and one woman. And by the way, this was when he laid the foundation at the beginning. All the sons of God shouted for joy. What are you going to do about that? These are referring to undoubtedly angels. There's absolutely no doubt. Let's also look at the Matthew chapter 22, verse 30. Matthew chapter 22, verse 30. Now, this is the most quoted verse, the most quoted the strongest was Hebrews 1.5. That was their uh, strongest. But you saw how that was easily demolished. That's why you have to be a Bible amateur, a Bible blockhead, a deliberate agenda against dispensationalism yep. in order to ignore this evidence. This evidence. I mean, you could, saw that easily in their strongest verse. This is not the strongest. This is just the most popular one. Matthew chapter 22, verse 30. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but as, as the angels of God in heaven. So see that? Their proof right here is that angels cannot marry. Angels cannot marry. So to say that Genesis 6 is referring to angels as the sons of God who married people, that violates Matthew 22.30. Again, they're not reading the verse out of excitement and passion, blind, blind, deliberate ignorance. Did it, say, did it say fallen angels or did it say angels in heaven? There's your answer right there. That's why we're not saying these are angels. We're saying that these are, whenever we say angels, we're not talking about the good angels up in heaven. We're talking about fallen angels out of heaven. That's easily debunked. There's one. By the way, this becomes even worse. They admitted sons of God are saved Christians, right? So Matthew 22, 30 is talking about saved saints in heaven, right? What are they as? Angels in heaven. They just equated then sons of God with angels right there. That's why it makes sense. John 1, 12, we become sons of God. Why? Because we're like the angels. They just, that verse became their double-edged sword now. Yeah. If they use that as a proof text, you just tell them, you just proved Genesis 6 that angels can be sons of God. That is easily debunked. By the way, we're not done demolishing this. Look at Jude 6, Jude 6. This is easily demolished. You have, you call yourself a pastor, and you have this agenda of uh, just destroying this idea about sons of God equals angels. 
I don't mind if you disagree. I don't mind if you have a hard time believing this. Because I think that that is just, you need time to grow in the Lord, and I can't convince everybody. I understand that point. But people who bash this and criticize this and have an agenda against this, I show you zero respect. Amen. Other people who fall into wrong stuff, all right, I can show them more respect, but to those bashers out there, zero respect, period. That's why I never respected those kind of people, even ever since years ago. Look at Jude 6. And the angels which what? Kept not their first estate, but what? Left their own habitation. They left heaven. Angels in heaven cannot marry so that they can marry. You know why they came down on the earth to marry? Because angels in heaven cannot marry. It's like a duh statement. Duh, angels in heaven <clears throat> cannot marry. So those angels came down on the earth to marry. It, it's, it's a duh statement, okay? You don't need a PhD for that. Look at uh, Genesis 6 to Genesis chapter 6. Even Genesis 6, if they really read Genesis 6, see, once they read Genesis 6, they put the blindfolds on the very first two verses of Genesis, very first two verses of Genesis, they deliberately ignored, and they went through a word search on everything that says Son of God, and they ignored other verses that shows angels can be Son of God. They word search anything that can contradict. Ooh, I finally found one. Hebrews 1. They search, search word everything that says angel. I finally found one. Amateurs. Yep. Pure, utter amateurs. Yep. You don't need to word search. You just read Genesis 6. Look at the first two verses. There's no way sons of God intermingle. Look at this. And it came to pass when who? Men, right? Is that men? Yes. Is that humans? Yes. Uh, duh, pastor. Okay, I'm just making sure. I'm just making sure. Humans, okay? Now, don't be dumb. Don't be stupid because you got it now, all right? Men began to multiply on the face of the earth and what? Daughters were born unto them. Humans, the daughters born from humans. Yes? Yep. Yeah, we got it? We got it? Okay, okay. Uh, uh, some people may not know, okay? They, they might be pastors and people stupidly subscribe to those kind of guys and say, oh, he teaches so, such a good Bible, okay? Some people can be dumb. Those pastors can be that dumb to see this. Verse 2. Daughters of men, right? Let me draw this out in case you don't see this. Okay, I know I'm repeating, but let me draw it out. Men, right? Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daughters. Yes? Yep. Mm -hmm. Humans, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you got the humans here. Verse 2. That the sons of God, oh, those are the men, saw the who? Daughters of men. No, 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 no. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid now, okay? I went little by little till you got it, okay? Humans are already taken. Daughters of men. Sons of God. See that? They're not humans. You already got the humans here. The sons of God, what? Saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. Oh, you wouldn't have gone to here. You have to jump through what? 20 something, 30 something, 40 something books to find, oh, that, that, that can't be it, you know? Blind, ignorant, stupid, stupid people who deliberately try to attack this. And I'm not calling you people who disagree or who have a hard time believing the stupid. I'm talking about people who bash this. You're stupid. <laughs> 